Life in Santa Monica is quite a bit different than any other part of LA. At least in terms of transportation, people who live here experience day-to-day -day life in a way that's much more similar to Europeans than most Americans. And I'm not just talking about the Expo Line, which was built right through the town. Instead, what's made the city feel so livable is the network of bike infrastructure that the city built out over the last 10 years. It's pretty much the only part of the entire county that actually has a network. Only the dark green lanes here are actual dedicated bike lanes. But even these lanes aren't very good. They're just white strips of paint on the road that you're expected to share with cars going 40 miles per hour. But back in Santa Monica, almost every street in the city has a lane that at least looks like this. It may not look that impressive, but the green paint really adds a layer of visibility that helps to protect bikers. But this is just the basic form of bike lane that Santa Monica has. It's nothing compared to some of the bigger infrastructure they've built here over the last few years. In a lot of the clips I'm going to use, you're going to be shocked at how many bikers appear. Really, Santa Monica is the only part of LA where you'll consistently see people biking. And that has a lot to do with the new infrastructure they built here. Take the California Incline, for example. As far as I can tell, it's one of the most utilized bike lanes in the city. And that's not just because of the drop-dead view you get when you go down the incline. It's only become popular recently because it was upgraded from its original condition. Pedestrians and bikers were forced onto this narrow one-way path that put them in pretty close contact with cars. So when they built this upgrade in 2016, it was an important step in getting the city closer to being bikeable. But it didn't quite make the area safe yet. People who rode their bike up here from the beach in the Marvin Brood bike path didn't really have a good connection to get into Santa Monica. This is what they would confront after getting out of the incline. Large tourist buses and cars almost always blocked access on the quote-unquote bike lane that existed here before. But during the pandemic, the city took the opportunity to expand the space here into a wide two-way protected lane. So now instead of being constantly on guard for your life, you're given plenty of room to relax as you see one of the best oceanfront views in the entire region. And since Santa Monica is so focused on building a network, they made sure that the new lane connects to the Metro Expo line up ahead on Colorado Street. And getting there is by far the most peaceful and chill vibe you can get on the bike path. Turning left up here, we enter Colorado Street, which was the first road in the city that they decided to remove from car traffic and give to bikers. Now it has a two-way protected bike lane that has some of the best treatments you'll see in the entire city. This architectural drawing really shows why. It's protected by a giant pedestrian walkway on one side and a concrete barrier on the right side. And there's only one lane for vehicular traffic and that's directed one way. Now it's important to mention that this area of Santa Monica is one of the most premier tourist spots in pretty much all of Southern California. Which is why it's so shocking that the street looked like this before. I mean Santa Monica has always been a tourist spot, but how is it really considered that if this is what you'd have to walk around in to get to the pier? Until a new light rail line connecting downtown LA reached here, people usually had to park around this area of Santa Monica and then walk down four blocks. And before the redesigns, I don't think walking down to the pier from there was really a highlight of anyone's trip. But now, it's almost certainly one of the things that they'll remember most. Although most of the protected bike lanes the city has built have been concentrated downtown, they're making a huge effort to actually connect all of the residential mid-city areas to a protected lane. Almost all the blue lanes you see here are planned to get converted into a protected concrete bike lane by 2026 and the city has a long-term vision to convert the remaining lanes into protected ones as well. The existing green painted lanes are good enough for most people to feel safe, although they're not protected enough for kids or people new to biking to try on consistently. Which is exactly why it's so important that the concrete lanes get built here. Because people who are really experienced with biking can feel comfortable enough to do things like this, splitting the lanes between cars and going really fast, but this is not what you ultimately want to do every single day you bike if you're running around to run errands or go to school, etc. Instead, what you want is a safe and consistent experience. Which is exactly why the city decided to build a protected concrete network. Because it's the only form of protection that will actually stop you from a car going out of control. And by the way, this photo was just used by NIMBYs who live in the area to try to protest the first one and a half miles of concrete lanes that were put in here just a month ago. But what's amazing about this is this photo wasn't actually caused by the bike lane. It was caused by a driver who ran a red light and immediately hit the car in this photo. If anything, the little bike lane here actually prevented the car from making a full rollover. But that misinformation didn't stop at least 35 people from showing up at the intersection at a planned protest made by one of the most conservative council members on the city council, 
who is trying to make a personal vanity project about the whole thing. This is not right. This is dangerous. This is that dangerous situation that we're looking at here. In reality, this is actually one of the safest things the city has done because it separated bikes from the car path, making the two less likely to interact with one another and increasing overall safety for car drivers. So now that that's out of the way, I can show you what this has actually done to people's lives. Because this street connects to the Metro Expo line and a school, it's become one of the most well-utilized corridors to shuttle people around going about their day-to-day -day lives. And it's done so in a way that's given them pretty much guaranteed protection each day. There's no more variability in the bike route that they used to take. They don't have to worry about if there's going to be an aggressive driver on a certain route. Instead, they have a concrete separation that provides a consistent experience each time. But these protests aren't going to go anywhere. The lanes are here to stay and the city's going to move forward with building out its network. Unlike places like Culver City, which just voted to completely remove their brand new protected bike lane, I'm pretty confident that that'll never happen in Santa Monica, but if enough reactionary people eventually get elected, I'm pretty confident that there'll be enough bikers to protest them here, because Santa Monica has a higher bike ridership than any other part of LA, and it's going to continue to be that way for the foreseeable future.